Welcome to Roof to Curb, the podcast for foodies of the home. Talking all things about the housing industry, brought to you by Pull Tab Sports, the best producer in podcasts. Today we've got guest Tyler Lego, Director of Business Development for Installed Building Solutions. Thanks for coming on, Tyler. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's a good old rainy day and thought we'd bring you in and talk about some fun stuff. So um, let's get right to it. We're going to talk about some home efficiency stuff. We're going to talk about some technologies that are going on in the housing space. You guys uh, you guys have a lot of trucks on the road. We'll talk about the number of those and some of the things that they do. But um, maybe a little background. Uh, you are the director of business development for a company called Installed Building Solutions, correct? Yep, yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, kind of background, started out in the industry um, prior to installation. I was working for Lampert's doing uh, city desk stuff, got into outside sales, and then, then they had started a installed installation program out of uh, Lampert's. So I started with them and then uh, moved on after down that. Down at the Apple Valley Yard, down right? the, Yep, down at the Apple Valley Yard. Lampert's then, Lumber, been yep. around for a long time, and they got acquired as well. Yep, yep, they got acquired by USLBM. Um, so uh, they were kind of more of a lumber company. They, they wanted to dabble in insulation and, um, you know, installed services. And then they kind of realized that installed services isn't necessarily their game. They're a lumber company. And sure. I kind of I was told that by higher up. So at that point, I kind of realized if I want to go this direction, it's not going to be here because I'm going to be yeah. the second fiddle. Kind of explain what installed building services, what what does that include? Um, so, yeah, installed building services, uh, installed building solutions. Like, oh, services would be like, you know, we start out with waterproofing, the foundations. Foundation goes in. We spray tar on the wall. We put uh, insulation board, some sort of protection board on it, and our value, you could put like an extruded foam board on, you could put like a drainage board on that would, uh, there's two different styles and price points, depending on like water tables and how the soil is, kind of sure. we predict what we want to use. A little different in clay versus sand. and Yeah, if it's know. a great sandy soils and it's a perfect job, we just would say, hey, let's use extruded because I don't think you need to use the premium product and or we don't really sure. have an issue warranting it. But if it's a bad clay soil, we should probably look at some other avenues. Okay. What about uh, other other services that you guys offer today? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So we we'll start off with the. It's usually easy to start off with the bottom of the house and work our way up. Okay. So we start off with the waterproofing, and then we do the foam board, and then we do the drain tile, which helps kind of mitigate the water where it's going inside, outside. Um, then we go up to the wall insulation, which would be like the wall cavities. Um, we either do fiberglass, we could do net and blow, or we could do a spray foam. And that would okay. be like the wall cavity before. That's kind of a good, better, best analogy, right? You yeah, got, yeah. Bats, which you typically see in a roll form, yeah. kind of folds and in, goes into a cavity. Yeah. Uh, you got opportunities for maybe the whole cavity not being filled. It moves a little bit, but still a great insulation product, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's kind of an industry standard. Like the basic is like an R20 in the wall. We make okay. it, they can make it like an eight foot bat or a nine foot bat. So it's a, it, R20 is industry standard. They make an R21, which is a higher density, which majority of the people kind of just go to. It's the price point of it isn't much more. So sure. a lot of guys are saying if I can publish it on my, um, you know, when they're selling the home, I we're we're a little we're a little better than what the industry standards are. We're sure. Go with that. Kind of than the minimum. If yeah. You will. Yeah. They don't want to just be the minimum. So then we start with that, and then we the net and blow would be like a kind of a mid product where it has a really good really good sound rating. Um, the house just it just makes the house feel better. Yeah. But it does come at a come at a little bit more of a price. A little more expensive. A little more yeah. expensive, yeah. Yeah. Maybe uh what, twenty percent, thirty percent more? I would say it's probably thirty percent, twenty five to thirty, but it just okay. depends on, you know, what we're doing. You know, if it's a if there's a lot of windows, you know, there's just a lot of variables in the house sure. that kind of dictate the price. So so net and blow a term. Yes. Right? Um kind of explain that process. So there's how does that work? Yeah, so, the easiest, so now I have a house that's framed. I've got mechanicals that are ran. Yep, and now it's time to insulate. It. Yeah, plumbing's done, electrical's done, everybody's done. The inspectors have came through, signed off. Uh, the builder has given a house to us pre drywall. So we'll either the basic is we just put batting in, and then we put a poly over it, and then we do like caulking and sealing around the top plate, meaning the top of the wall. So you foam the those areas. Foam those areas, then you use like an acoustical sealant that is never hardens. We put that on the bottom of the wall and on the top of the wall, and then around like a window frame. So that mm -hmm. would be the basic, and then we put poly over it. That's the basic batting. Uh, when you, once you move into like the net and blow, we would first come in, clean the house, sweep it, make sure everything there's no 
um, you know, debris. dust debris up against the wall. Then we come and put a netting on the wall first, and then we would uh, cut slit holes in it. And then we actually put like a hose down the wall. We kind of adjust the pressure of our blow. Yeah. And then we actually just slowly dense pack that wall. Okay. And what is that product, Tyler? So that, that's what, just, what is actually going into the That's cavity? just a loose fill fiberglass. Okay. Yep. Like formaldehyde-free loose fill blow that would go in the wall. Is there a recycled product that there, people use as well? There could be a recycled product, but that it, that would be like a, um, probably like a cellulose would be like a recycled product. But okay. we don't traditionally use that in walls. It's really dusty. You're it not doing recycled blue jeans anywhere? We do that, but that okay. would be, yeah, we, we'll get to that. That'd be kind of down the road. We don't usually, we will do that in the outside wall. It's another option. But okay. um, there's just, and then there's like, um, we could, so I'll finish up with the, with the net and blow. Then we, we put netting on, blow it, and then we put a poly over that. And then we do the same kind of system you would traditionally do with the fiberglass. Okay. Then sheetrock would go over Then sheetrock would go over that. it. Yep. And then the best, and then the one above that would be spray foam, um, which is a closed cell foam we use. And that goes in the walls. And we, we only spray about, about three to three and a half inches in the wall. Traditionally about three, because you get about an R7 per inch of the foam. Okay. The foam is really, really good. It's uh, So R7, one inch times three inches, you get R21. Yep, yep, exactly. And that's a, that's a sprayed R value. And the aged R value goes down a little bit. So you kind of have to factor that in depending on what, uh, what okay. your spec is. Okay. But, but the nice thing about the foam is it's it, it has a good uh, shear strength in the wall, meaning like side to side shear strength. The wall, the house doesn't really move. The nice yeah. thing about the foam is it just kind of holds everything in place. What about sound? You know, I've been in some homes that are you know, batting insulation. They've got net and blow. They've got spray foam. Um, some of these homes are on acreage. Some of them are in smaller developments where you know it's ten foot and five foot setbacks. How does sound impact based on the selection of those three? What do you think? You know, that that's a great question. The 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 spray foam is probably the least because it has no it doesn't have really have a really good STC rating. It's a really dense product. So it doesn't really muffle sound. Okay. Um and fiberglass is fine. It's kind of has a decent STC rating. But if you're really looking for, you know, you say you're out on acreage and you got really windy hills or you got wind kind of sure. blowing in. And then it, I mean, the net and blow is probably your best rating for that. Okay. Um, but you also have to factor in some other things. You know, the outside, what you're using. You know, if you've got vinyl, if you've got sure, hardy, so whatever, whatever the cladding is, I'm putting on the exterior. Of the yeah, home, it makes mean, an impact for as well. sure. It does. I mean, if you're putting you're putting like a um, like smart side, or if you're putting like a LP, LP smart side, LP smart side, lap side, side and, yeah, yeah, or like a hardy board. I mean, those are really dense products, so yeah. those don't help the cause. They actually kind of they're 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 kind of against you a little bit. Yeah. So you kind of have to factor those things in. So when we're talking to our builders and they're talking to their clients. We're saying, hey, spray foam is really really awesome. There's just the, the drawback is it's just not it, the house is not going to be quiet. It's going to be very efficient, sure. but it's just going to you'll hear you might be able to hear some outside noise. Whereas if you went to the net and blow, or if we went with like a skim, there's another, you know, there's another option. We could skim the walls too with like a one inch of foam. And then we could bat it and or put net and blow in there. And, that, and that's probably your, the highest, highest end, if you will, of a finish, right? Yeah, that kind of gets best of both worlds, right? It's it's a, We call it like a hybrid system in a sense. But you sure. kind of have to switch your poly a little bit. Where, cause, where do you see that? Tie that back maybe into price points of a home, right? Mm -hmm. So, all right, we got homes that are $700,000 below. We've got homes that are seven hundred dollars to $1.5. And then we got above that, right? What would be a, a typical finish? inside of some price ranges of homes and and why is that yeah no that's a that's another good question it's it's somewhat loaded in a way because the only drawback of that question is if it's a private homeowner that's building his own home for sure. seven hundred thousand he's gonna think differently than a, a home builder that's building you know 50 or 100 homes a year because sure. they're not the guy that's building his own home but he might have 700 into it but he's gonna have a his heart and soul into this is gonna be his his last home and he's going to do it right. So, um, but historically, if you would look at it, I mean, it's, you're probably at a $700,000 home. You're probably putting fiberglass in bats, uh, bats in. Yeah. And you might, there, if it's just a, I mean, if it's a own private homeowner at 700, they're probably either net and blowing and or spray mm -hmm. foam because it's a, that's a night. It's a, it's a lot bigger yeah. project for a one, for a one home guy. When, but when we work with clients, Tyler, majority of the time we're talking net and blow. Yep. Just yep. because I, I love the efficiency of it. I think bang for your buck on the purchase of it, you know, that 20%, 30% extra compared to bats. I, I believe, and, you know, I'm sure you got data in your pocket somewhere that, uh, you know, that shows great return on that product 
for that price point. So the difference of maybe it's three grand or five grand or ten grand, yeah. I feel like you can get that back every month. Plus, I love the sound side of it. You know, your house feels better, it breathes better. It it definitely, you know, you don't have all the distractions around you from from noise levels as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's I mean, you kind of nail it on the head. That's when like I always tell people when I'm doing a sales pitch on a net and blow, go look at one that's been done right after it's been um, insulated. Sure. Um, the house just looks pretty. And that that that's one yeah. thing, the start of it, right? Everybody yeah. when something looks sexy when they walk in, that's if you've already won somebody over when it looks really, really nice and like professional. It's clean. It's clean. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that right there is better than when we walk into a house and it's got fiberglass and that color is just kind of that dingy, yeah. looks brown. dirty, brown. Yeah. It's just, everybody's like, oh, that's just yeah, fiberglass. <laughs> Can't wait to but get when, sheet rock. Yeah, but when it's white and nice and pretty and it's clean, because it has to be clean when we do that because it's right. a different system. And then the sound, it's just really, you can sit in that house and it's like, wow. Yeah. And, and honestly, when they're in that house and it's fiberglass, it might sound similar, but yep. they've already had this mindset that it's like, this house is, it's it's like when our guys would walk into a job site and it's dirty and filthy. Right. Or we walk into a job site that's clean. Yeah. Their no, mentality is already better. Makes a difference. Roof to Curb Podcast, sponsored by Duke Cannon. Don't trust your mutton chops and mustaches to just any brand. Duke Cannon Supply Company makes hardworking grooming products for hardworking guys, and their products will help you keep your facial hair in championship form. From their beard wash and balms to beard oil, they have your back and your face covered. Duke Cannon, work harder, smell better. Stock up on DukeCannon.com and use Beard10 for 10% off your next order. Duke Cannon is an official partner of the Minnesota Wild. You, we talked about, you know, after you insulate your home, then, you know, sheetrock, right? But there's there's a, a couple different options with a poly vapor barrier, right, that goes between whatever you insulate with and sheetrock. You want to talk about there's a couple differences with that. There's another good, better, best type exercise in there. You yep. Want to talk yeah, a little there's bit traditional about that? four mil poly that would go in like a house, just outside wall poly. It's just four mil. Uh, that's just your kind of your starter. And then, you know, we get into some like – multifamily apartment buildings and that stuff that we do a lot of that that's usually a traditional six mil poly but then also um they make a really cool product it's called certainty smart poly mm. and the beauty of that is depending and that that sometimes dictates either the system you're using in the wall or what kind of wall sheeting you have on the outside if you've got you know plywood or if you've got dense glass or if you've got osb some stuff that doesn't breathe and you know the the contractor's worried about what's happening inside that wall. Cause I mean, as we all know, the dead of winter, it's negative 20 outside and somebody could have their 75 house, five degrees could be inside. 75 inside and they're yep. doing the, they're doing the big Christmas dinner and everything's running. Right. Uh, so sure. there's humidity's high and yep. you're the, what you expect in that wall is a lot, you know, I mean, there's a, that the change of temperature is huge and that's happening right in the wall. Yeah. So some guys will, they'll switch to the certainty smart poly, which actually, Welcome let, to Minnesota, right? Where yeah, the yeah. Climates well, are crazy. Correct, and that what that does is it lets the air, lets the moisture that's in that wall kind of out. It, it pushes it into the house, so it kind of it won't let moisture in, but it'll yeah. let moisture out. So when you say ma moisture, it's not like running water. No, right? no. These are it, these are vapor, like a condensation. Right? That's yeah, like a transition, like the temperatures that are hitting somewhere in that wall. Sure. And depending on that wall, it depends on where it hits. I mean, the wall cavity is five and a half inches, right? Traditional. Two by six stud is five and a half or five, is yep. it? Yeah. Yep. So you don't really know on that wall where it's hitting. It could hit anywhere in that five and a half inches. Yeah, it's only in uh, only in Minnesota where you can have seventy five inside and you know minus forty outside, or it can be a hundred and five outside and you know sixty eight inside, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, there's yeah a lot we, of conditions to, yeah. to navigate. That's yep. for sure. No, absolutely. What What do you guys see? Uh, you talked about OSB and plywood on the exterior for sheathing. What, what do you guys see that you're like, hey, we, we like we like going into a home from an insulator perspective and seeing X on the exterior. Do you, do you have an opinion? Do you have like, hey, if we see OSB, which is more of like a chipboard, right, yep. glued, glued product, and then you've got plywood, and we've got different you know thicknesses of both those products. But do you guys truly look at a house or a spec when you get a, a plan and you got it for Mr. and Mrs. Smith and like, hey, we're thinking of going uh, – batting insulation, and we're doing plywood here. Does that trigger anything for you guys to say, hey, if you're doing plywood, what you should really look at is X? You know, that's, a good, that's something we don't, and I think that yeah. we maybe should. I mean, I'd, yeah. I'd be lying if I told you that we, we, get, we get down to that, to the, to that deep sure. into it. But, 
you know, the problem sometimes is a lot of those dictate and they change be due to what the exterior is going to be. Yeah. I, I think as a builder, do you, I don't know. I mean, we, I kind of, we're, we're, I'm just really good at one thing. So I don't necessarily know yeah. why or what OSB is that better for LP? Is that better for sure. different siding it's types? It's the golf it, ball and uh, driver conversation, right? Yeah. <laughs> like if I, if I have a Titleist driver, I want to hit a Pro V or, a, you know, I want to hit a Bridgestone ball with a driver. So that, that's kind yeah. of a conversation. But it's a, it's always interesting when, you know, you try to size up products and when we're looking at comfort of the home and how it performs and, you know, feasibility of, the expansion contraction because you know we always say the house is living right when you build a house it truly is moving the whole time and we talked about those conditions earlier so i just think it's interesting we see um and now you got all these zip wall products yeah right? that you drive you, around you see green green stuff around the house yeah Whoa, well, and, and zip wall to me is you know it's a it's a good product i mean i i don't know i've been in the industry a little, you know 20 plus years yeah uh, 20 20 <laughs> years which is kind of fun to say but um i don't know that i've seen zip stand the test of time yet and, yeah. and, and stand yeah. the test of time meaning like you're not going to know what happens in a year or two it could take five years it could take 10 years you just don't sure. really traditionally know but yeah. with that zip wall system if, if people don't know it's like a it's almost like a wall sheeting that has house wrap or a built like some sort of air barrier already on the sheeting where then you just have to I don't know if it's required to seal the seams i think it's a good practice i don't yeah i don't know if they've changed that where you, the seams have to be yeah, usually they are. Yeah, um, like yeah. early on, I don't know if they were. But then I've seen some builders where they're putting zip wall on and they're actually wrapping the house. Yeah, right? so that's yeah, that's now that's going to be city code. So certain cities are requiring no matter what. I know like Woodbury is a very big stickler on doesn't matter. Yeah, they don't they don't really they, they don't, don't trust it. They don't trust it, and or it's not. There's you know there's always loopholes in every code, so that it, they kind of read the code book a different I way. Think Inter the, it's I think interpretation. The city, the city of Woodbury probably has some. Some history on uh, mold and, and stucco issue that yeah, uh, yeah. You know, and that stress. hit them you know twenty years ago that yep. uh, they probably don't want to see repeated yeah yeah you know? so they're just saying hey we we get your product and maybe they're on the same stance that I have yeah. they haven't seen the test of time yet yeah let's go back uh, a little bit it's always interesting on the business side you so you went from Lampert's and then you you come to this company IBS yep um, and you had a partner there yep yep right? yep yep I came to IBS. Um, um, with my business partner, he had actually started the company before I came, um, and he had a silent partner that helped him get get the ball rolling there. Then I came on, kind of just you know we were competing with each other. We knew each other. Um, our families had known each other in the past. Mm -hmm. um, him and I didn't. We wouldn't know each other growing up, but we got to know each other in the industry as we competed with each other. And he kind of uh, cornered me at an event and was like, "Hey, why are we going against each other? Why yeah. don't we do this together?" Yep. And uh, sat and talked to him, and it took me a little bit to digest it. And then we kind of circled back, and I was like, wow, this guy's a really nice guy. Like, I would – this is this seems like a great opportunity. And at that point, when I was at Lampert's, they had kind of brought up the lumber's number one. So I'm like, yeah, okay. Well, yeah. I think the writing's on the wall and your for passion me. wasn't necessarily selling two-by-fours at the no, time. No, my passion was insulation. I mean, it's kind of what they rolled me into, and I was like, this is, this is what I want to do. And mm -hmm. I kind of – hearing that was a little deflating. So I'm like, okay. Well, I think this is a good this is a good time, and then I went over, and then uh, we had grown the business pretty well, pretty quick, and uh, I had sat there, and we were kind of we we're kind of at a stance of you know where do we want to go with this? What does this want to do? I really would love some ownership. I've I'm this is you know this you're is, here to stay. I'm here to stay. I want. Yeah. I really want to you know I really want to be involved in this, not just be a sales guy. So we kind of worked up some stuff behind the scenes, um, and we had a silent partner that we had said, okay. How about if we if we pay for if we buy the silent partner out and then you can uh, buy in some ownership? So at that point we did that and then uh, that's when things really kind of took off. After Fun. that, yeah. Fun. Fun. I mean, it just kind of now it's now it's my baby. You know, I yeah. still I still I loved it even prior to that. But yeah. once you have ownership in something like true ownership, it's uh, it's a little different. It's a better. It's a different. <laughs> it's a different feeling, right? Yeah, it's I a mean, little different. Yeah. Um, so you guys get so you guys you you build a business and then all of a sudden. You get cornered again. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. No, then uh, that was. I'm trying. I, I'm. I, I'd be telling you. I don't know what year that was that that happened. I just know that um, in 2000, right around mid 2014, probably early in the year, we were approached by a publicly traded company based out of Columbus, Ohio. Um, hmm. Which is funny. The name is Install Building Products. Yeah. Was looking to purchase us at Install Building Solutions. Sounds so, like a Google search. Yeah, yeah. Kind of funny. <laughs> um, 
and we had, at that point we had we weren't even looking to sell like we were just kind of rolling we're like wow this is great like we're great meaning things were good i mean but yeah. we were both we were burnt out like we had well, just just come out of the recession come right? out of the recession and we had just as owners that we could just do this all ourselves we we're both not 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 college educated and i don't know if that really means what that means but yeah. we both were kind of like school of hard knocks is how we've learned yep you know, grew up through, in the industry grew up in the industry through the, yep. the good and the bads and you know we kind of we knew where the company needed to go and it just knew that we either go all in again and we had already sure. been working a ton like yeah 80 hours a week was a normal and that was just like that's yep. just because we wanted our we had our we had our pulse on everything at every app. we just we weren't hiring the we just figured we could do it all ourselves we should have on a business ship on a business owner level we should have hired people and maybe done things delegated to delegated look stuff maybe. and we just always did it ourselves because we figured if we do it we know it's getting done yeah you know and that's just yep. the mindset of a you know a entrepreneur um, so then we kind of rolled in we they kind of they came to us and said hey here's here's a pro here's our we're here's our proposal to purchase you and we were kind of like okay and we sat together and said hey what's the, what's your number you need what's your number you need and the beauty of our partnerships is we're we're the closest friends in the world so it was a it was a real mutual thing that we said hey here's our opportunity yeah. to have a little bit of our life back and we can get a company that'll come in and bring all this capital yeah. to like grow which the is, business which is hard right yeah it's yeah because that's hard to raise it that was exactly. the next level we needed to do. We needed to we needed to inject multiple millions of dollars into the company for new equipment and new trucks and all this stuff to get it to the next level. Yeah. So it's like either we're going to do it and do this all over again, or we get a. Um, a I, mean, I kind of consider them a partner. I mean, they're they're really they're a great company, great people. I've loved the transition. So yeah. Um, and it allowed you to do some other things in the business, right? Yeah. So no. so they bring in some capital. They bring in maybe some expertise in areas they didn't have or. Uh, purchasing power, or maybe a different different take on strategy, right? Yeah, for sure, all so, of those. So that's that's allowed you guys to add some other other verticals and other services, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what what are those, Tyler? So the services prior to it, we had insulation, waterproofing, and then we had interiors division prior to being prior to the acquisition. Yeah, we what, were in, what yeah. Did, what's covered under interiors? Yeah, interiors is kind of like a, yeah, really really broad. It's a big number. Yeah, big, it's it, big it's it, yeah, it's a big <laughs> word. It can mean a lot of things. Meaning. At that point, it was like installing shower doors, like heavy glass, okay. shower doors and custom closets and custom bathrooms. And then it was shelving, which is wire shelving and closets. Uh, toiletry, accessories, towel bars. Toiletry, towel bars, kind of all yeah. those just little, an we call them ancillary products sure. that, that people sure. don't want to do and just kind of forget about. And then we do like the custom closets, which is like all melamine where we have like designers that would go out and meet with the builder or, and or the homeowner yeah. and design like custom closets. Organizational products, maybe in pantries or yeah, you know, all yep. your closets and yeah, anything that would be rear uh, entries. Yep, yep. Okay. So that was that was part of that. That we that was kind of at that point. That's all the divisions we had going. And then yeah. after the acquisition, we're like, you know, how we had such a good market share that we were we were kind of at a crossroads, saying, hey, do we can't keep going to get more customers, but how can we get more business out of our current customers, which yeah. is a great, I don't, I'll give up, I'll just give Jeremy the credit for it. I don't really know that I didn't come up with that idea. And sure. Yeah. And he's a, he's a really good, we kind of had a good, good, uh, visionary good, type. Yeah. Good partnership where I just kind of like, he ran operations and he's like, you go find sales. I'll figure out how to get it done. Yeah. So my vision is always just go find work. So yeah. I think he had came, I'm, I'm, I'll just have to give him the credit because there's, I don't know where else it would came from. Yeah. He'd always say, Hey, let's, let's, bring more let's offer more to the same customer we're already dealing with them let's just bring more services so then we brought on uh windows and house wrap um where we windows and house wrap meaning a new construction homes where the framer would come frame yep and the framers at one point were like we're so busy that don't want to deal with no, window we're, install. we're good at framing and we make good money at framing and we just want to keep framing I don't want to come and put house wrap around or I don't want to come back and do windows because say the windows aren't there when they're done framing. Sure. And they're like, it's just, it was just a nice added service. So that's been going really well. We also do gutters. So gutters on new homes and gutters, gutters on existing houses. Mm -hmm. So we'll go out to an existing house and tear off the old gutters, put on new and, or if they didn't have gutters, we'll design a design like a layout of what we're going to, what we're thinking for your home and then uh, propose it to 
the homeowner and or association and or builder. Sure. And then you added. And then we added. Kept uh, going. Yeah. Yeah. Then we kept, <laughs> then we were like, well, you know, we had, uh, we had some friends that we kind of knew through the industry that had a smaller electrical company, mm -hmm. um, which is Horizon Electric. And they had, uh, they had grown through the years and then the, you know, recessions hit and they kind of, you know, you just, you, you scale back and they had to kind of scale back to a point where um, the two partners, the two brothers were like, hey, we're kind of looking at our vision, where we're going to go. And they kind of had an exit plan and we're like, well, why don't we help with your exit plan? And uh, what if we acquire you and then you guys can stay on for whatever period of time you want. And then here's your kind of, here's your, uh, here's your walk away. And then their stay on is, I mean, so it was funny. We had a time, a time, a, a time when they were going to leave yeah. and they, they stayed longer. And sure. it's funny. I was in my shop today walking around and one of them who's been retired was there today. Yeah. I'm like, you're bored. He goes, I'm extremely bored. I just need something to do. <laughs> yeah. So he's in the shop tinkering around. Give me so, something to do here. Yeah. So it's just, um, that was a great acquisition. And then, uh, Tony Peterson runs that division Yeah. and he's grown that. I mean, I, Within numbers, within I think he's up to 65, 70 guys, maybe around that number between journeymen and foremans and um, apprentices. It's a lot of trucks. It's a lot of trucks. A lot of trucks. So that's another thing where having that parent company with uh, really good equity and just their the assets they have, they want they're they're fine throwing money into growing the operations to support it. Sure. Yeah. And then uh, I think you you starting to play in the dirt a little bit too, right? Yep. Yep. So then we had a. That was kind of a, that was, a, that was a, that was, it, it, it started off with installed having to, we started a dirt division and then uh, we kind of realized that with dirt, it's a little different. We thought you didn't necessarily need to have union guys or you could find guys that would work because you could pay them the same as union, but come to find out the union is, does have a great operation with the 49ers and having dirt work and getting good employees. So sure. And we went to our parent company and they just, they weren't comfortable having a, union shop okay so we had to we kind of dissolved that we kind of it, that had moved over to a different that kind of moved out of the the the, the big I, ibs the, the big IBS bucket or ibp ibp bucket that yeah. moved on to a different uh division that's kind of okay. running itself side so, okay so that's going good yeah that's uh that's yeah. a fun you, you start finding verticals that align and don't align and expand contract and yep. figure it out right yeah so but that's a that's a lot of lot of business to go to develop. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, right? and it's it's really good, and it's just you know the the pros and cons. The pros are you know you you get a customer, you get a builder in, and you offer them all these services. They 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 feel like it, it's it's you kind of become part of them. Yeah. Um. The, the the con is you know you you go to a job you you do an awesome waterproofing, you do a great insulation, <laughs> but then you uh, you don't put the tall bar in the right spot. Right. And now the whole job is everything about you've done is kind of um, you've been criticized now. Now you're sure, now you get at risk, right? Now you're at risk for now installed. It's just you know what's going on, you know. Yeah. But you're you're batting seven fifty because you've done great on <laughs> yeah. three out of the four. Last time I checked, that pays pretty well in Major League Baseball. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Roof to Curb is sponsored by Will Anderson Insurance. I want you to try a quick exercise for me. Think of your insurance person. Okay. Can you picture them? It's probably some person from high school or the old neighborhood that you no longer keep in touch with. Insurance is too important for the status quo. Isn't it time you switch to one of the best? Will Anderson can help you with all of your home, auto, and commercial insurance needs. He'll give you a fair solution. He'll be there to pick up the phone when you need him most, and he'll explain a complicated business like he's reading a children's book. Reach out to Will Anderson, and we bet you he'll save money too. Call or text Will for a quote at 612-361-7283. Or visit willandersonagency.com. Let's talk about a little bit for the consumer, Tyler, like new technologies and um, efficiency. We got it's the fall time in Minnesota, weather's changing. It's a 40 degree, rainy, blistery day today. Uh, blistery or bustery? Blustery, blistery. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's whatever Winnie the Pooh said or Eeyore right. said it, right? Yeah. Um, it's one of those days, that's for sure. But um, new technologies, uh, I've got a house, I want to, you know, my heating bills aren't going down, right? It's just getting more expensive. What would you recommend? If I if I called your company, I called anybody else insulating-wise and said, hey, I think I need to look at something to save money, what would I do? Yeah, no, that's a that's an, that's another vision I, I didn't add. Um, so we also offer of like existing home insulation. We call it retrofit or re-insulation. Um, okay. The best, I think the best way to put it is reinsulating at home. Mm -hmm. um, we'll go, we've got a few crews and a couple sales guys that just go out on calls, which 
of course, now that you've talked about the blistery weather, yeah. um, now our phones are ringing. Everybody's wondering. They're turning the furnaces on. And they're like, yeah. oh, this is they, everything they forgot about from last winter is now resurrecting in their heads. Like, oh, I got to call. I meant to call last year, but now I'm furnaces on. Um, I live in an 80s home, 70s home, um, early 90s home, and insulation was done uh, to the standards of the, you know, uh, the codes have changed and the efficiencies have changed and everything. So um, the homes back then had just, you know, they would go out, they had poly on the ceiling, but, you know, they'd have, you know, they'd run the wires up into the attic. So those wire holes. Yeah, a now, lot, of, lot of openings. Lot to, of, to, lot of, yeah. And why is that a problem? Uh, problem with that is now you're bringing all that heat from the house up into the attic. Mm -hmm. So one of the it, one of the two things is bad about it. One, you're losing efficiency. Two, you could be trapping that you could be trapping that heat in the attic. And if we have a winter like we had last year, really cold, really cold, and really snowy. Yeah. And what happens when it snows? Snow early. Yeah, and snow. We get a lot of snow. Which yep. the problem is when you're on the attic if, or in the roof. If you're not getting that snow off, you could be blocking all your ventilation. So where does that where does that heat go? It just sits there. It sits there. And then yep. and causes issues. Yeah. So, so then you get this thaw or frost, frost and thaw, thaw right? Yeah. And, then and it, it looks like I have leaks in my roof, but you don't. Yeah. It's actually, you know, you've got a thaw going on inside because the the temperature's getting trapped, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, and then the city or the energy companies are phenomenal, like Excel and uh center point, they're offering these serve they're offering these rebates to these to the homeowners saying, Hey, if you have an uh, insulation company come out and we call it bypasses or the pen like a penetration that goes and mm -hmm. we call them into the attic. So if we come out and see all your bypasses, your penetrations, and or you know, you've got duct work, you say you've got a, a a fan for your um your stove or something, your oven, like that that duct work goes into the attic. There's a lot of gaps around that. So part of our proposal that we offer to to a homeowner is we or association, we come in, we seal off all your bypasses, foam everything. We take care of everything from the top down. So we'll, we'll, so you're up in the attic. So yeah. So, yeah so we go into the attic, into an existing home, and we crawl around. The guys will crawl around, find all the bypasses, kind of move all the old insulation away, yeah. making sure there's no. I, I, ideally, is to try to find every penetration that's not sealed. Yeah. So then we'll go through first, seal all the bypasses, and seal all the penetrations that are going into the attic. And then the other thing is, you know, we'll we'll look at all the ventilations. We call them a vent shoot or like a, a shoot that's down by the um, by your soffit fascia. By your soffit and fascia yeah. and making sure they've got good ventilation. Because you could have a house that's, we could go in and re-insulate a home, awesome. But if it's not ventilating, you could have more of a problem too. Yeah. So yeah. If, if you've got it, yeah, you could trap it. So you've got to make sure the ventilation's good. So we'll go around and we'll add a new vent shoot in or whatever we got to do to make sure everything is um up to up to code or not up to code, but up to like our standards to make sure that what we're doing is gonna is gonna work. Sure. So you, you talk about the the bypasses and the openings, typically in mechanical areas, right? Furnaces and duct work and all those kind of things. Maybe some gas lines, all, all kinds of things that would run out of that room, right? Yeah. And then you've got maybe a hood vent. Yep. Right over a cooking area. Uh, we also have recess lighting, right? For a while there, everybody wanted the six inch recess can. That would go into an attic space or, right. or roof type setting, right? Um, but they weren't sealing them. No, they weren't. Right. And they and then what they made, you know, at, at one point, I think they just made like a, they didn't necessarily make like a a can light that was sealed box can. You yeah, know, I think I, box. like well, like I think the can lights now you can have a sealed can and mm -hmm. or just a just a remodeled can. Correct. So they're not necessarily sealed. Back then, I think they just had cans that would go up. So. Yeah, that's great. So we offer a service too with like bath fans and or therm or bath, uh, fans, and bath fans and then like yeah. can lights where we'll go and move all the insulation away and we'll make like a box yeah. out of a Thermax, which Thermax we use different than extruded foam board. Thermax has like a flame spread on it so it can get hot. Sure. Um, it's got a vapor barrier on it. So we'll put that over the top of the can and then we'll seal all the way around it and then we'll kind of encapsulate that can. So it doesn't have any because a lot of heat comes out of those cans. If if I have an older home, Tyler, like does insulation expire? So if I have if I have a bunch of insulation in the attic, is there like a period of time where you're like, hey, over so many years you should really have it looked at or maybe refilled or 
Like, is, is there a deterioration of insulation? Does that happen? No, insulation really doesn't break down. Not okay. traditional fiberglass, but like a, if we would go into a house and blow cellulose, they'll have a, they'll have a settling after okay. you do it. But once it settles, it has like a hardening on it, and that's kind of their finished product. But no, insulation doesn't expire. It doesn't okay. go bad. Um, it's just what, what, was, what was done in different periods of time has now they've kind of said, hey, let's, we think that more is a little better, you know, our climates are, we were starting to understand our climates, we're starting to understand our- Or they change. Our efficiencies of our furnaces, have, like you have you seen like a furnace has changed, right? It's no different. Yeah. Like, you know, early on it was a 80%, 90%, 100, whatever, all the percentages of the efficiencies yeah. of a furnace. So those have grown over time. Or variable speed furnaces now or- Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All those different things or zones and different things, how you're, you're trying to keep your air and just have different efficiencies. So yeah, so we'll go in and then- um, after the insulation, after all the Burmax boxes, all the bypasses are sealed, the biggest thing we see a lot is, is like lighting, you know, switch lighting. You know, you've got your wire. Where does that wire have to go? Well, it has to go up into the attic and sure. then it has to go to another spot. So they keep moving it. Yep. So though all those little holes have to, all those little holes that are going into the attic are all over the house. They have potential for, for loss, right? Yeah, have potential for loss. So we get all that sealed. And then after we get all of that done, we come and we blow like, a, we just kind of re-blow the whole attic with a fresh, fiberglass on it and then uh then that's then we get a we get an audit done so we get like okay. a, blower, a blower door test done a pre sure. so they do a pre-test which kind mm -hmm. of a pre, pre blower door test kind of tells you you know the efficiency of the home well how their air loss is and um and, got, and you guys provide that or they we call? can we can okay. provide it and or there's a companies that can that you can have a, that i think that the energy company will do like a pre-test Mm -hmm. And then we do like a post post blower door test to see the difference in the yeah, improvements to see if it's improved, and yeah. then uh, then they then they then they get their rebate. The rebate doesn't come in a check, so just kind of everybody has you to take it on your taxes. Uh, no, you can use it on your taxes, and or you'll get the rebate coming off maybe one of your future bill oh, from from, okay. the, from your provider. Kind of a credit. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. sort of like a credit. How about you know we talked a lot about ceiling openings and bypasses and penetrations. What about the walls though? Like. Um, I want to check my windows. Do I take my base off and say, hey, let's re-insulate around this area? You know, I don't want the, you know, the older homes used to find magazines and newspaper, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, the older homes you're going to find, you know, we, they'll have, uh, now we all, we use like a, we use like a can of healthy low, like a low expanding foam. So we'll sure. put that in the window so it doesn't really bow the jams or move the windows much. Yep. It's not supposed to move them at all. Like a vinyl window is... So we want to make sure we're using a low expanding foam. It gives you a little more, a little more uh, insulation around those those openings yeah. of the building, right? Yeah. And in the '80s and '90s, they were just putting fiberglass in with like a putty knife around that opening. That's, sure. So it's so it's really not. So they're somewhat drafty. Yeah. But we don't, you know, honestly, we don't get too much into that, just because okay. you almost need like a skilled carpenter. Because okay. a lot of you know the houses in the '80s, '70s, you start peeling that trim. Um, it might have four coats of paint on it. It might have yeah. Who knows what you're gonna find, right? Who knows what you're gonna find once that, that trim might not come off and go back on the same way. So so bang bang for your buck, definitely the attic. Let's yeah. start there. Yeah. Let's, let's get those openings sealed up, bypasses sealed yep. up, and then maybe if you have to reinsulate, and then coupled with airflow. Yep. If yep. you don't manage the airflow, yeah, you could just be causing more problems. Yep, for sure. I mean. First and foremost, easy science, easy math is heat rises, right? Mm -hmm. So where do you want to stop it? Stop it from going out. That's first, that was where I would start everything. And then you can get down to, you know, in the 70s, 80s, if you have an unfinished basement, mm -hmm. um, which it, it's rare. We don't see a whole lot. But if you get an unfinished basement, I think there's rebates also for sealing off the rim joist. We call it the rim joist in the industry, sure. which is where the you know where your wall sits. And then you've got either a floor chest or an eye joist that sits on that wall between your levels. That's kind mm -hmm. of like, that's the weight that carries around your floors. Around those floor trusses, yeah. Yeah, around their trusses. So we'll come in and spray foam inside those cavities so you're not getting any draft coming in and or, you know, the 70s homes are notorious for like a cantilever where they'll bump out like a kitchen at or like a, where the kitchen table is. They'll bump that out and it's always so drafty and cold because it's almost sitting at ground level outside. So if we can get in and access those and spray foam down Protect at the bottom. Them. Stop to get from that draft because everybody complains about in the older homes and they're walking around the outside like how cold it is. Yeah. So if, if there's an opportunity to where we can seal off. Sure. That's great. Um, anything else that's coming up? New technologies, products that, hey, if I'm if I'm going to build a new house, I'm going to do a new remodeling project. When it comes to insulation or barriers, is there anything I should be looking at 
Anything you suggest? Yeah, I mean, there's always there's, they're always trying to work on new endeavors. Um, I think the lot the one of the nicest things if you can do it is having some sort of exterior insulation on the outside wall. Mm -hmm. So if you can get some sort of sheeting or some sort of like foam board to have like we call it like a thermal break. Because if you take like a house and a traditional home and you take all the studs around a whole house and you line them all up together, that's how much insulation you're not getting in a wall. Sure. Because if you every one of those studs, you, there's nothing you, you can't get anything in between them. Yeah. So you're just getting everything next to them. So if you can try to get something on the exterior, some sort of like a one inch foam board, some sort of okay. extruded insulation on the outside, and try to reduce those. Cold spaces, cold or spaces, spaces, or hot spot yeah, spaces. we call it like a have a nice thermal break between yep. where the wall hits. So that's probably where everybody's trying to go. It's just, uh, you know, as as everything, it's just hard. You know, you you always want to talk about these things, and everybody's like, well, interest rates are up. No one wants to pay more. I mean, it's it's a hard sell, and then people have to redesign the home to kind of figure for that exterior because now, sure, the house is a little wider. Yeah, could be two inches wider. You know, if you go to one inch on the outside. Sure. Excellent. Uh, Tyler, how do they find installed? So if I need any of those services that we spoke about, what's the best way to go to the website? Yeah, go to, go to the website, go to our Instagram, installbuild.com. Um, yeah, our website, installbuild.com. Install yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. love to have it. We've got uh, all the services. We'd love to have anybody call. We've got sales guys. We usually, if you call into our office, we don't, uh, we don't actually put you in with a sales guy that moment. You usually talk to one of the girls in the office, and then she'll get all take all your info, and then uh, we usually allocate it out to a sales guy. Um, right now, we're saying we want like a twenty four hour turnaround to call somebody, um, call somebody back. Yep, yep. Okay. Ultimately, we'd like twelve hours, but it's just with our guys running. I just don't know everybody's schedule all the time, so yeah. it's just nice that we take the info, get as much info as we can from the homeowner and or customer and or builder, and uh, yeah, excellent. All right, Tyler Lego, Director of Business Development for Installed Building Solutions. Thanks for coming on Roof to Curb. Yeah, Todd, thanks for having me.